Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video on Materials Management Strategies. This video is part of a series of four videos on the use of different kinds of strategies to optimize a business's operations. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is to have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write into your vocabulary sheets the definitions of key terms or of any other words that you're unfamiliar with. And the fourth thing that you need to do is to have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I'll give you some guidance about what you should write in your summary books. Once you've finished watching this video, please read the section from the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that information. You'll recall that operations management is the management of resources and functions within a business, that is the management of the operations system, to transform inputs into goods and services, that is outputs, in a way that minimizes the costs of production and maximizes the quality of those outputs. Accordingly, the aim of operations management is to transform inputs into goods and services, or outputs, in a way that minimizes the costs of production and maximizes the quality of those outputs. Put another way, the aim of operations management is to make the best use of the operation system of a business, that is, to optimize the operations of the business. By minimizing the costs of production and maximizing the quality of outputs, Good operations management improves the efficiency and the effectiveness of operations and therefore maximizes the business's competitiveness. I've explained these concepts in a previous video. You should also recall that there are four types of operations management strategies that can be used to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of a business and therefore maximize the competitiveness of that business. These are technology, materials management, quality management, and waste minimization. In this video, we will be looking at materials management strategies. On this slide, I've set out the two learning intentions for this video. Make sure that you write these learning intentions down in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention requires you to be able to describe and evaluate strategies to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations related to materials. For this purpose, we'll be looking at four materials management strategies. These are, first, forecasting, second, the master production schedule, third, materials requirement planning, and fourth, just in time. The second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify each of these materials management strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. By watching and taking notes on this video, you will be given the information that you need to achieve these two learning intentions. In addition, in class, you will be doing a number of learning activities that require you to apply this information so that you're able to achieve these two learning intentions. Let's start off with some background. First, what is materials management? Well, materials management refers to managing the procurement, use, storage and delivery of the inputs that are used by the business to produce its outputs and managing the storage and delivery of those outputs. So materials management is about managing both inputs and outputs. Go to the end of your vocabulary sheets, find a spare definitions box and write this definition in there. The second important concept that you need to understand is inventory. Inventory refers to inputs, for example, raw materials and component parts, work in progress, that is unfinished product, 
and outputs, that is, finished product, that are stored by a business. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term inventory and write this definition in there. A business needs inventory so that it can produce enough output to satisfy customer demand. A business needs to have inputs ready to use so that it can make outputs. Uh, for example, a furniture manufacturing factory needs to have a stock of wood, varnish, glue and nails available to it so that it can make furniture. If the factory only waited for a customer's order before it went out and bought these inputs, then it would take a long time to make the furniture, as the business would first of all have to buy the inputs before it could even start the manufacturing process. And it may be that when the factory goes out to buy the inputs, then those inputs are not available. Uh, for instance, as where the factory needs a particular type of wood to manufacture the furniture. Again, if the factory can't obtain uh, this wood immediately, then that also will delay it in making the furniture. Similarly, a business needs to have some finished products available so that it can sell them to customers. Again, if a customer wants to buy a table from the furniture manufacturing factory, then the customer wants that table now, and the customer is unlikely to be prepared to wait while the factory manufactures that table from scratch. However, there are costs for a business in having or holding inventory. First, inventory such as inputs and finished products takes up space. It has to be stored, which means that the business might have to pay for that space. For example, the business might have to rent a warehouse to store the inventory in. Alternatively, the business will have to use up its own space to store the inventory in. Yet that space could have been used for other productive activities. Uh, for example, an additional machine could have been put in that space to increase the output of the business. Second, capital is tied up in inventory. It costs money to buy inputs, and so the inputs are effectively cash. By spending money on inputs that the business does not need immediately, the business is not spending that money or is unable to spend that money on other things that it needs. For example, it could have used that money to buy additional machinery to increase the output of the business. Third, the business has to pay for staff and equipment to manage and move the inventory. Uh, if the business has a big warehouse where it stores its inputs and outputs, then it will need to pay employees to look after the warehouse, to put the inventory into the warehouse and to take the inventory out of the warehouse. In addition, the business will need to pay for equipment such as forklifts to move the inventory. And finally, there's a risk that the longer inventory is stored, the more likely it is that the inventory will be lost, damaged or spoiled. Uh, for example, a factory that manufactures cakes will need to have an inventory of the milk that is used in making those cakes. But if the factory has more milk than it needs, or if the temperature of the warehouse where it stores the milk is not properly controlled, then the milk will go off, that is spoil, and so it will need to be thrown out. Similarly, if the business makes too many cakes, which then have to be stored, then they may go stale before they can be sold, and so those cakes will have to be thrown out. This all costs the business money, because the business has paid for the inputs which are wasted when the output that they used to make is thrown out. As you'll recall from our first learning intention, we're looking at four different materials management strategies. These are forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning, and a method of inventory control called just-in-time. These strategies are all closely linked. As you'll see, forecasting involves the business forecasting the demand for its outputs and the inputs that it needs to meet that demand. The business then uses these forecasts to work out its master production schedule, which is its schedule of how much output is to be produced and when that output is to be produced so as to meet customer demand. The business then uses the master production schedule in its materials requirement planning, which is where the business works out what inputs it needs, 
the quantity of those inputs and when it needs those inputs so as to be able to produce the outputs as required by the master production schedule. Materials requirement planning must take into account the business's current inventory levels because the business will not need to buy inputs or manufacture outputs to the extent it is already storing them as inventory. And finally, the business needs to control its inventory in such a way as to ensure that it maintains the right level of input and output inventory so that it can produce and sell the output required by its customers, while minimising the costs to the business of holding inventory, that is, the costs which I've described in the last slide. In this video, we'll be looking at a particular system of inventory control called just in time. The first materials management strategy that we need to look at is forecasting. Forecasting is where a business forecasts, that is predicts, the demand for its outputs. In doing this, the business needs to forecast both the quantity of its outputs that are likely to be demanded by customers and when those quantities of outputs are likely to be demanded by customers, that is when customers are likely to require to be provided with the outputs. Forecasting also involves the business forecasting, that is predicting, the inputs that the business needs to meet the demand for its outputs. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheet, find the term forecasting and write this definition in there. Forecasting is necessary so that the business can ensure that it has the quantity and type of inputs available when it needs those inputs to produce the goods and services that the business's customers demand. When forecasting the demand for its outputs and the inputs necessary to make those outputs, the business must consider a number of factors. These include firstly the time taken to negotiate contracts for the supply of inputs and secondly the lead time required by suppliers to supply the inputs. Both of these factors will affect when the business can actually obtain the inputs it needs and therefore when the business will be able to produce the outputs that its customers demand. Another factor that businesses will need to consider in forecasting the demand for their outputs and their input requirements is external events. Uh, for example, a business like Boost Juice requires fruit to produce its fruit smoothies. In such a case, Boost Juice will need to take into account seasonal variations in forecasting the demand for its smoothies and the fruit, that is the inputs, which is necessary to make those smoothies. In cold months, when fruit is more expensive, there may be fewer customers, both because people want hot drinks rather than fruit juice drinks, and because the high price of fruit during the winter months means that Boost Juice will have to charge more for its juices. Similarly, a business that Im imports inputs will need to take into account likely changes in the Australian dollar exchange rate. If the exchange rate depreciates so that one Australian dollar buys less overseas, then imports will be more expensive, which will affect the price that the business charges for its outputs. The second materials management strategy that we need to look at is the master production schedule. The Master Production Schedule, or MPS, is a software-generated plan that describes the types and quantities of outputs that need to be produced by the business to satisfy each customer order, and when those outputs are to be produced. The Master Production Schedule is based on forecast demand for the business's goods and services. Look down the left-hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term Master Production Schedule and write this definition in there. You can see the link between the Master Production Schedule and forecasting, which we've just discussed. The Master Production Schedule uses the business's forecasts of the demand for its outputs to determine the types and quantities of outputs that the business needs to produce. Note that the master production schedule is very detailed. It focuses on the types and quantities of inputs that need to be produced to satisfy each customer order. Accordingly, the master production schedule sets out the quantities and types of outputs that need to be produced over daily, weekly and monthly periods to meet customer demand for those outputs.
The third materials management strategy that we need to look at is materials requirement planning. Materials requirement planning, or MRP, refers to a software generated plan that describes the types and quantities of inputs that need to be procured by the business to produce the outputs required to satisfy each customer order in the master production schedule. This plan also sets out when those inputs are required. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term materials requirement planning and write this definition in there. In this definition we refer to the business procuring inputs. Procurement means the purchase of inputs by the business. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term procurement and write that definition in there. So, while the master production schedule focuses on the outputs that a business needs to produce to meet customers demand for those outputs, materials requirement planning focuses on the inputs that a business needs to produce those outputs. You can see the link between the master production schedule and materials requirement planning. Materials requirement planning sets out the quantity of inputs required to produce the outputs that the business must produce in accordance with the master production schedule. Materials requirement planning also sets out the time by which those inputs are required to enable the business to produce the outputs that the business needs to produce at the times specified in the master production schedule. There are a number of factors that materials requirement planning must take into account. These include, first, the time taken to negotiate contracts for the supply of inputs. Second, the lead time required by suppliers to supply inputs. Third, the quantities of inputs required to produce um, the outputs that are specified in the master production schedule. Fourth, the current level of the business's input inventories. If the business already has a substantial inventory of inputs, then it will need to procure, that is purchase, correspondingly less inputs to make the business's output. And finally, materials requirement planning must take into account purchasing procedures. Uh, for example, it may be that the business is able to obtain a bulk purchasing discount where it buys more than a certain quantity of inputs from a particular supplier. In this case, the business may want to buy a larger quantity of inputs than it needs at that time so that it can qualify for this price discount. The fourth and final materials management strategy that we need to look at is just in time. Just in time is a system of inventory control where inventory is replaced as it is used. Under the just in time system, first inputs are delivered just as they are needed for production. This means that small quantities of inputs are delivered frequently. And second, finished products are immediately dispatched or sold to customers. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term just in time and write this definition in there. The purpose of just in time is to ensure that there are sufficient quantities of inputs available to produce finished products and sufficient quantities of finished products, that is output, available to meet customer demand while minimizing inventory costs. On a previous slide, I've described for you the costs for a business of holding inventory. Note that there are two parts to just in time. The first part is that inputs are delivered to the business when they're about to be used in production, that is, just in time for production. Uh, for example, an ice cream manufacturer might order small quantities of milk more frequently to ensure that it's not left with a large inventory of milk that isn't needed for the production of ice cream and that therefore spoils. The second part of just in time is that output is dispatched or sold to customers immediately after it's produced. That is, output is produced just in time for the customer. Uh, for example, McDonald's uses a just-in-time system in the sense that its staff don't start cooking burgers until a customer has placed a specific order. This means that the burgers that are produced are immediately sold to customers, which minimises the waste of unwanted burgers.
Now, when deciding um, what quantity of inputs the business needs to meet its immediate production requirements, the business must take into account three factors. These are firstly, the quantities of finished products that are required. Secondly, the quantities of inputs that are required to make the finished products. And thirdly, the timeliness and reliability of supply of the inputs that the business needs to make its outputs. Many businesses have a computerized just-in-time process where their computer system sends out an automatic alert to an input supplier when the business's input inventory levels fall to a critical level. The supplier then sends the required quantity and type of input to the business. We saw an example of this in the video that looked at um, Toyota's manufacturing processes. You might recall that when a car was being assembled, then just before it was time to put in the seats, the uh, Toyota computer system would send out an alert to the seat supplier to send seats to Toyota. Those seats were delivered to the factory, and as soon as they were delivered, they were taken to the production line and installed in the Toyota cars. So far, as required by our first learning intention, we've described four materials management strategies, that is forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning, and the just-in-time, that can be used to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of operations. However, our first learning intention also requires you to be able to evaluate these strategies, which means that you need to be able to explain and weigh up both their advantages and their disadvantages. Remember that an evaluation is more than a description. In an evaluation, it's not sufficient to simply describe the advantages of one of these strategies in one paragraph and then describe the disadvantages of that strategy in another paragraph. Instead, in an evaluation, you must weigh up each advantage against a related disadvantage using words of difference such as, however, on the other hand, in contrast, whereas, and while. This requires you to compare apples with apples. In this table and on the next slide, I've identified the advantages and related disadvantages of the four materials management strategies in the same color. Now, there are some advantages that don't have related disadvantages and some disadvantages that don't have related advantages. These are in purple type. We can still include these in an evaluation, but we'll do this in a separate paragraph at the end. Please include this table and the next slide in your summary books, together with notes from the discussion which follows, where this helps you to better understand this table and the next slide. The major disadvantage of all four of the materials management strategies, that is forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning, and just in time, is that they avoid excess input inventory and excess output inventory being held by the business. Forecasting tries to ensure that the business only produces the output that is required by its customers and that the business only procures the inputs that are necessary to produce that quantity of output. This should result in the business having just enough output inventory to satisfy customer demand and just enough input inventory to produce the output that is necessary to meet that customer demand. A master production schedule sets out what amounts and types of outputs the business needs to produce at what times so as to meet the forecast demand of its customers for output. Again, this is an attempt to ensure that the business only produces the output that is required by its customers and that the business only procures the inputs that are necessary to produce that quantity of output. This should also uh, result in the business having just enough output inventory to satisfy customer demand and just enough input inventory to produce the output necessary to meet that customer demand. Materials requirement planning sets out what amounts and types of inputs the business needs um, to produce the output demanded by its customers and when the business wants those inputs. This should result in the business having just enough input inventory to make the required output. And finally, just in time tries to ensure that the business receives inputs just as they are to be used in the production process and that the outputs that are produced are immediately dispatched or sold to customers.
This will also reduce the amount of input and output inventory that the business holds. The fact that these four materials management strategies avoid excess input inventory and excess output inventory being held by the business is an advantage because, as I've explained, excess inventory is a cost for the business. Inventory takes up space that has to be paid for or that could be used for other productive activities. Capital is tied up in inventory. That means that the money that is used to buy the inventory could have been used for other purposes. The business needs to pay staff and buy equipment um, that can be employed and used at the warehouse to manage and move the inventory. And inventory which is stored can be lost, damaged or spoiled. On the other hand, it can be costly to implement these materials management strategies. For example, the business will need to buy software to produce a master production schedule and to undertake materials requirement planning. It will also need to buy software if it wants a computerised just-in-time system that sends alerts to suppliers when inventory falls to a critical level so that the business needs more inputs. Another advantage of these four materials management strategies um, is that they enable production to run without interruption because they ensure that the right inputs are procured in the right quantities at the right times. And a final advantage of these four materials management strategies is that they help avoid underproduction. Underproduction results in shortages of output, which means that the business is not satisfying the demand of its customers for the business's goods and services. These four materials management strategies avoid underproduction by ensuring that the business has enough inputs to make outputs and enough outputs to meet customer demand. Whereas the previous slide set out advantages and disadvantages that are common to all four materials management strategies, this slide sets out advantages and disadvantages that apply to only some of these strategies. Please remember to include this slide or a summary of it in your summary books. An advantage that is shared by forecasting, the master production schedule and materials requirement planning is that they all assist in the business meeting customer demand for its outputs. This is because they ensure that inputs are matched to the outputs that need to be produced to meet that customer demand. Forecasting predicts customer demand for the business's outputs, and the master production schedule sets out the quantities and types of outputs required to match each customer order and when that output needs to be produced. It is only once a business's outputs have been scheduled in this way that the business's input requirements can be determined, that is, the quantities and types of inputs and when those inputs are needed, so that the business can produce the outputs required to meet customer demand. The purpose of materials requirement planning is to set out these input requirements. However, insofar as forecasting and the master production schedule are concerned, the information that they use, which is based on forecast customer demand, may be inaccurate. This is because it's very difficult to predict the future, and it's not safe to presume that future customer demand will be the same as past or even current customer demand. If the business's forecasts about the types and quantities of outputs that customers will want and about when customers will want that output are incorrect, then the business will either overproduce or underproduce output and will either buy more inputs than it needs or buy less inputs than it needs. Overproduction will lead to excess input and output inventories whereas underproduction will lead to the business not having sufficient inputs and not making sufficient outputs to satisfy customer demand. An advantage of both the master production schedule and materials requirement planning is that they give the business flexibility. The business is able to adjust its production in response to changes in customer demand and when the business introduces new products by updating the master production schedule and its materials requirement planning.
In this way, the business can ensure that input and output inventory levels are controlled, so as to ensure that customer demand is met without the business holding excessive amounts of inventory. On the other hand, the use of materials requirement planning may result in inflexibility, in the sense that once inputs are ordered in accordance with materials requirement planning, it can be difficult to change those orders to respond to changed customer demand for the business's outputs. Finally, an advantage of forecasting and uh, materials requirement planning is that they enable the business to reduce the cost of its inputs. This is because by forecasting the business's input requirements into the future, the business may be able to negotiate long-term supply contracts with its suppliers, which lock in a favorable price for those inputs, not least because when a business buys inputs in bulk, the supplier will often give the business a discounted price. However, this can result in the inflexibility I've just described. If the business is locked into a long-term supply contract for its inputs, then it may be difficult to reduce its input purchases because that might result in the business buying less inputs than it's contracted to buy from its supplier. Just in time also suffers from some potential disadvantages. First, if the materials that are inputs don't arrive on time, for example because of interruptions to the supply of those input materials or because of industrial action at the supplier's factory, then production of the business will be interrupted because there is no buffer stock. Second, there is less time to check the quality of the inputs provided to the business because those inputs are used immediately in producing outputs. Third, there are higher ordering and administration costs because orders for inputs are more frequent. And fourth and finally, the business might lose its bulk buying discounts because it wants smaller quantities of inputs delivered to it more frequently rather than a large quantity of inputs delivered at one time. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to propose and justify materials management strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. To do this, you must be able to specifically relate the use of these materials management strategies separately to efficiency and effectiveness. That is the purpose of this table. Please include this table in your summary books together with notes from the discussion which follows where this helps you to better understand this table. All I've done in this table is to take the relevant advantages of the four materials management strategies from the previous slides, still color coded, and relate them to both efficiency and effectiveness. By keeping the colored wording, I'm hoping you can see that you only need to learn the information once to be able to answer both a question that requires you to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of these materials management strategies, and a question that requires you to justify these materials management strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. Well, how do the four materials management strategies improve efficiency? Remember that when we're talking about the efficiency of an operations management strategy, we're focusing on how that strategy increases the value of output and reduces the cost of inputs. These materials management strategies reduce the cost of inputs and therefore increase the efficiency of a business's operations in two ways. First, as I've explained a few times, there are costs for a business in holding inventory. These costs include the cost of the space that is taken up by storing the inventory, the cost of capital that is tied up in inventory, the cost of employing staff and purchasing equipment to manage and move the inventory, and the cost of inventory that is lost, damaged or spoiled. By ensuring that the business is only producing the output in the quantities, types and at the times required by its customers, these materials management strategies avoid the business holding excess output inventory. By matching the business's input requirements to customer demand 
for the business's output, these materials management strategies avoid the business holding excess input inventory. In both cases, this reduces the business's inventory costs and so increases efficiency. The second way in which input costs are reduced is through the use of forecasting and materials requirement planning. Because they forecast the business's input requirements into the future, it means that the business may be able to negotiate long-term supply contracts with its suppliers which lock in a favourable price for those inputs, for example because the business qualifies for a bulk discount. This will reduce the cost of the inputs and so increase efficiency. We can now look at how the four materials management strategies can improve effectiveness. Remember that the effectiveness of these materials management strategies refers to the extent to which they contribute to the achievement of business objectives. In undertaking this analysis, we must first identify the business objectives that may be achieved through the use of these materials management strategies. I've chosen two business objectives for this purpose. These are the business objectives of increasing profits and of increasing sales. Well, how does the use of forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning and just in time contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing profits? They do this by reducing input costs. These materials management strategies reduce input costs because they enable the business to better match its outputs with customer demand and its inputs with the outputs that are necessary to meet that customer demand. In this way, they reduce excessive input inventories and so reduce the costs associated with the business holding input inventories. As I've said, the costs that a business incurs as a result of holding input inventories arise from the use of space to store the inputs, the fact that capital is tied up in the inputs, the need to pay staff and buy equipment to manage and move the inputs, and the risk that the stored inputs will be lost, damaged or spoiled. By reducing these costs, the four materials management strategies increase the profit of the business and so contribute to the achievement of the business's objective of increasing profits. How does the use of materials management strategies contribute to the achievement of the business objective of increasing sales? Well, the materials management strategies increase sales in three ways. First, the four materials management strategies enable production to occur without interruption because they ensure that the right inputs are procured in the right quantities at the right times. By enabling production to occur without interruption, the business can produce and sell more outputs. Second, the four materials management strategies avoid underproduction. Underproduction is detrimental to a business because it means that the business is producing less output than is necessary to meet customer demand, and so the business will lose sales. However, using forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning, and just in time, ensures that enough inputs are available to make outputs, and that enough outputs are made to meet customer demand. Third, forecasting, the master production schedule, and materials requirement planning enable customer demand for output to be met because they ensure that the business procures inputs that make the outputs the business needs to produce to meet customer demand. Again, this means that the business is producing all of the output that it needs to meet customer demand and so is maximizing its sales. And finally, the master production schedule and materials requirement planning give the business flexibility to adjust its production in response to changes in customer demand or when the business introduces new products. Again, by maximizing its production of output to meet customer demand, these strategies will maximize the sales of output by the business and therefore contribute to the business objective of increasing sales. Well, this brings us to the end of this video.
As a result of watching and taking notes on this video, you should now be able to do two things. The first thing that you should be able to do is describe and evaluate strategies to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of operations related to materials. For this purpose, we've looked at four materials management strategies, that is, forecasting, the master production schedule, materials requirement planning, and just in time. The second thing that you should be able to do is to propose and justify materials management strategies as ways of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. In class, you'll be undertaking a number of learning activities which will help you to apply the information that is contained in this video and will therefore help you to better achieve these learning intentions. In the meantime, please make sure that you read the pages from the textbook referred to on the first slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Thank you for your attention.